I'm Valder Beebe, host of the Valder Beebe Show. I am famously known for that celebrity interview. Interviews with today's pop icons, movie stars, and celebrities. Tune into our FM radio broadcast and our online broadcast. Visit ValderBeebeShow.com and SoundCloud.com slash ValderBeebeShow. I'll see you there. Dr. Robert Holloway, yes, you're correct. You've got the Valder BB Show broadcasting here live in Dallas, Texas. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me this morning. Well, I wanted my audience to know we were talking a little bit about you prior to you coming on that Dr. Robert Holloway is a medical director, a gynecology oncology program in Florida Hospital. And he's here today to tell us how to take charge of your ovarian cancer treatment. Dr. Holloway, I'm meeting more and more women, or I hear more and more women who call into the show that they're either involved in this great lawsuit that gave them ovarian cancer, or they, they uh, inherited it from in their DNA. What's going on? Well, uh, it is true that about um, a little less than 20% of patients with ovarian cancer do carry a gene, BRCA1 or BRCA2, actually two genes that may have a mutation that predisposes them to develop ovarian cancer. Uh, this gene also predisposes a patient to breast cancer, so it's a very important gene. There's another set of patients with ovarian cancer who acquired this mutation through spontaneous mutations in the, in the cancer. So it's, it's, it's an important new concept, a new finding, that there is a genetic component to ovarian cancer. And we think that all patients with ovarian cancer should be tested for this gene. So the current status and trends related to who do you determine who's diagnosed? Do you just, like we do mammograms, do you diagnose all of us? Unfortunately, for ovarian cancer, we don't have a mammogram. We don't have an easy test. There, there is a lot of research being done, and I'm hopeful that someday we will have a screening test for ovarian cancer, perhaps somewhat similar to a pap smear. Uh, but we don't have it yet. So what we're left with is the annual physical exam, and to educate women to pay attention to signs and symptoms. If you have persistent pelvic complaints, pain, you may think it's bladder, you may think it's gastrointestinal with the intestinal tract, but if you have persistent pelvic complaints, you need to go see your gynecologist and get a physical exam. That can be the most important first step to early diagnosis of ovarian cancer. Secondly, know your family history. Know if you've had distant relatives who've died from abdominal cancer and maybe investigate that further and find out was it ovarian cancer. Because if it was, you might be at risk to inherit a gene and perhaps you need to delve into that and be tested. When you think or if you are diagnosed with cancer, cancer is still the, the, the C word is still the death word. I know doctors are working to change that. But when you are diagnosed with that, and I, I've, I've heard people who have been diagnosed, it is so traumatic. Are there some things that you can help us with when, when you face this? What, what, can, what can we do? Well, the first thing, as I said, is seek medical attention quickly and don't, don't delay because early treatment can make a huge difference. I'd also say after you've seen your gynecologist, seek consultation with a G1 oncologist. These are doctors who specialize in the treatment of ovarian cancer, and it can make a significant impact on your treatment outcome. Through surgery and chemotherapy, we can get the vast majority of the 22,000 women who are diagnosed each year into a clinical remission. And, and we have made improvements in overall survival over the past 20 years. The problem is, we're still left with the fact that the vast majority, up to 80% of patients with advanced ovarian cancer will have a recurrence or a relapse of their disease during their lifetime. And they'll face more chemotherapy, sometimes more surgery. And uh, this gets to be an ongoing problem. The remission times tend to get shorter. And until recently, we haven't had options after that second treatment 
to help maintain remission. And we, we, we essentially tell patients and their families, we just have to watch and wait and look for that recurrence of disease. You can imagine that creates quite a bit of anxiety and discomfort for the patient, the family, and even the treating physician. So the FDA recently approved an oral once a day therapy to help maintain remission. It's a class of compounds called PARP inhibitors. The drug's name is Zajula. The scientific name is Neraparib. And it's, it's the first oral once a day PARP inhibitor therapy which has been shown to help maintain remission and patients who either have the gene BRCA mutated or not may benefit from this therapy. I want my audience to remember that this month is Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. Let me ask you, Dr. Online, is the information credible? And if it is, where would you send us to get more information? Well, to read about Zajula, I'd go to zajula.com, Z-E-J-U-L-A.com, to, to get all the information on safety, adverse events, and prescribing information. And then speak to your treating oncologist about this and help help make decisions using that information about the appropriateness for Zajula if you have recurrent ovarian cancer. You can also go to the Foundation for Women's Cancer to get more general information about ovarian cancer. Those are great sites. I want to thank you, Dr. Robert Holloway, for coming on the Belder BB Show and talking to my audience. My audience is made of 89.6% females, so this is a perfect audience. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me this morning.